Thank you for tuning in to the Psych War episode number two. Today I have with me a very special guest. He is also my producer, and his name is Rashad Lyles. Rashad, say hello to everybody. What's up, people? Hope everybody's having a good day and or night, wherever you are. All right. On the last episode, I said tis this time we were going to talk about the concepts of dogmatic thought and how that can lead to you mislabeling yourself and the misguiding of information and stuff like that. But first of all, we're going to get the general, I guess, feel for our guest, Rashad. So, Rashad, what are some, what are some things that you feel need to be brought up that you want people to know about? The earth is dying. Um, your government is stealing your money. That, that's all true. Most of your taxes are missing or going to war. <laughs> that is true. Um, your president. <laughs> uh, our president, I'm sorry. Yeah, our it, president. There's a lot of things going on. There's always going to be a, du- a duality in it, you know. We all kind of. He might be a bad president for whatever you say, but he is your president. We are Americans. If you want to see his bad choices, you have to see his good, too. Not saying he's a good guy, but... So, I see when you say he had, we have to see the good and the bad choices. So, Rashad, I guess, like, would you say you're... You're open-minded when it comes to, like, thinking of different perspectives for topics? Yeah, I like to consider myself an open-minded person. All right, well... How do you feel What's about that? anything in recent recent politics you want to talk about? Some some that might tickle your fancy. Politics. Tickle tickle. Tickle. Ooh. <laughs> tickle. That reminds me of a pickle. That reminds me of a vegetable. A pickle is a cucumber that was put inside of vinegar and preserved. Yeah. You know what else you can preserve? <laughs> what? Yucca. Yucca fruit. Who? Yucca. It's um. It's more of a Spanish fruit. And there's a new Green Deal ran by Alexandria Cortez. She wants to get it grown up north in place of cauliflower. It's um replace cauliflower. Yeah, cause cauliflower is a colonial vegetable. So she, you should, we should replace some more traditional vegetables with more traditional vegetables and fruits with more exotic and embrace other. Cultures. Oh yeah, I think I actually heard some about that. She was saying like they should grow more. Yeah, like like what you said, they should grow more exotic fruits and vegetables in America to accommodate for like all the different races and yeah. ethnicities that live here. That obviously, as you can guess, on social media and the likes, that leads to at least to a whole lot of controversy and discussion because we have a lot of different what I like to call tribes in America. Oh yes. Because, like we said, the theme for today is tribalism. And in America, you can instantly kind of relate to, like, two big ones. And that's the left and the right. Or what, what would you say it's called? The, the alt? Oh, no, we'll, we'll just call them left and right. <laughs> Get, getting alt gets confusing really quickly. Okay. And... We're, we're just going to say left and right for now. Alright, but obviously there are a lot of differences in the left and right. There are a lot of misconceptions. There are a lot of assumptions. There's a lot of general hate because people blame each other for different things. Like, if you look at most Republican things, like, what's what's the Republican news channel? Like Fox? Yeah, Fox News. Fox News, Shane Crowder. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's him. Yeah, like that's that's traditionally right wing. So you know somebody that's yeah. traditionally right wing, you just assume, you instantly assume what they're based on. Because right now in America we're we're incredibly fucking divided, but we don't we don't have to be like I always like to tell people and express it and try and live it to lead as an example that just because you have a difference in opinion in someone that doesn't mean you can't learn to work past that opinion and learn to be more accommodating overall for everyone. Yes, get together and work together to make society better instead of focusing on your differences focus on what makes you you I guess alike yeah makes you realize and you realize your importance and your importance to the group and your importance to yourself as an individual so that you can realize your full potential in helping the group by becoming your full self 
Yeah, but I guess because we always have to acknowledge a different perspective on it. For some people, that's not easy because there, there's also the accountability of it to, to like self awareness start with actually acknowledging that you may have a problem or that you are problematic. And it's that self awareness that allows you to get over it. Like, as humans, we possess that ability. We possess the ability to reflect on our own behavior and learn put, from our mistakes and grow. That's what makes us who we are. And that's the point of everything. You're supposed to. You're, you're not supposed to have the same opinion your entire life. You can't stay stagnant. You have to continue to adapt and evolve for, to your environment, whatever society may be. But you see, the main the main issue I feel, I don't know if you feel it, but the main issue that I feel when it comes to tribalism is that there it it's it's the different perspectives. It's just like as soon as a general statement is made, the us versus them or the they or the we, it's there's people that also don't think like that. And in the times we live in now, the progressive times we live in now, there are, everyone's preaching togetherness. Everyone's preaching progressiveness. We're all trying to lead towards a better tomorrow. Environmental, environmental friendliness has been different. While there are people on several different spectrums that still think climate change is not real. I would hope that if you're listening that you've already done your research and actually formulated an educated opinion on that. We won't judge you, but... If you have a reason to believe climate change isn't real, I would like to know. Like I said, I hope you did your research and formed an educated opinion. Anywho, the problem with when people don't actually do their research and form an educated opinion is that when you're inside of a small cell of people, a small group, you're going to end up with what's called an echo chamber. You're just going to say something in just like a... Uh, remember the birds from Finding Nemo? Mike, Mike, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to yeah. end up like them. Like, one's going to go off, then they're all just going to start going off. And then. That's the only thing you're hearing. Nothing's going to be different. There's not going to be any change. There's not going to be any progress. But, admittedly, the thing that comes from that, well, we're not talking about the birds anymore because we, we'd hope that some of those birds still scream out Mike because that's nostalgia and we love it. Mike? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> but in real life, what we kind of hope for is that people will realize that, like, despite the past, that they're a lot alike. But that calls for acknowledgement on both sides. That calls for acknowledgement on a lot of different perspectives. That calls for acceptance on a lot of different perspectives. And that calls for equal footing. And a willingness to look outside your personal perspectives and immediate surroundings and take a look at what's affecting people. Out, outside of your community and you gotta make every community better to make everything better yeah how would you say how would you say that it is in, in, in our community Rashad by our community do you mean like the black community I, I mean our general community like where, where we live where we live honestly I feel hypocritical saying stuff like this cause I don't <laughs> I don't feel like I communicate Yo. Uh, commit enough to my own community like I got more going on outside of my own immediate uh, I like to I like to think that I, I I say hello to my neighbors every day when I see them outside we wave no me and my neighbors are strangers we I don't know anybody in my building but see you, see that's the thing about like complexes though I don't believe people should live on top of each other I don't believe that's how humans were actually meant to live because you can't get away from anything. If you have a problem with your next door neighbor, he's not like a mile away or down the street. He's just right below you. Right there. You how can you hear gonna, everything he's doing. How you gonna talk smack and then just go sleep right above somebody knowing the bedrooms is in the same place. Y'all probably got the same layout. That's that moment where like you walk outside of your house and you just look over and your neighbor's watering his lawn and you hit him with the Dinkleberg. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why he was always so mad at Dinkleberg. Oh, like th there was actually a there was an episode that explained it. If for anyone that doesn't know what we're talking, about, we're talking about Fairly Odd Parents. Timmy's dad always had like a really bad grudge against their neighbor, and their neighbor was actually just a really nice, positive guy named Dinkelberg. And there was actually an episode where like Dink it was like showing Dinkelberg to be this like actual ultimate evil bad guy that was actually trying to hurt Timmy's dad. 
But then, like, Timmy talked to him, and he was just like, yeah, I found out years ago that your dad has a deep, unseated resolve to just hate me. But I see that it gives him purpose, and it makes him happy. So I feel like it's it's, it's my duty to make sure that he's happy out here. Because as long as he's happy, I'm happy. Really? That is the dead-ass reason, bro. Wait, when did that come out? That was it was recent, like, a couple years ago. Because, you know, Fairy Odd Parents is still oh, going. Oh, man, I stopped watching Nickelodeon a minute ago. Yeah, but literally, like... Timmy's dad hated him because it it was basically because Dinkleberg had a nicer everything than him than him. Like every time his dad had something, Dinkleberg would have a nicer version of it. But it wasn't because Dinkleberg was one upping him. It was because Dinkleberg was actually just a nice guy that that liked to work hard. I thought he was just like the nice, oblivious guy, like so happy he can't even see the hate. Like he doesn't he's not <laughs> concerned with your anger, Mister Turner. Like I'm I'm doing good. I'm Dinkleberg. Come on, yeah. Now. I think that's also kind of what it was because. Like, his dad would be out there on the push more, and then break down, and then Dinkleberg would just drive by with a glass of lemonade and iced tea on his lawnmower, and just be like, oh, you doing good out here today, neighbor? Yes. Have a great day, neighbor. He's just like, fucking Dinkleberg. Who does he think he is pulling over here on his nice lawnmower? Dude, does that make him cooler because he's, because <laughs> he acknowledges that his hatred is good for him, or is he bad for feeding that hatred? Uh, that's a that's a tough one right there. That's a bit of they got a bit of a codependent relationship because if one of them ever leaves, like what's Timmy's dad gonna do? What he's gonna put that determination on? That sounds like he's gonna end up taking it out on his wife and kids. See, that goes around. That goes back to the tribal, uh, the tribalism. Dinkelberg was his immediate neighbor that he didn't like and understand, so he hated him. If you remove that neighbor, you probably just gonna find another another person to hate. That's true. Because for some reason, as humans, we always try and put a label on something or put a specific term on something so we can just focus on it as a specific problem that's plaguing our lives. And I, 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 what's not, not advise. I urge people that if if there's something in your life that you feel like is really stressing you out to just take a moment and step back and think about, is it a problem? Is it a problem of like your own making? (laughs) Is it, is it a problem of your own creation? Yeah. Sometimes things can get really stressful. You don't... <laughs> you don't gotta always take it to 10. Yes. You kick it back out of cool, too. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of... For for reference of better... For, no, for, for lack of a better reference, like... The Marvel movies, like... While Thanos and his entire, like... That was a very crazy option. All right, we're going to say the, we didn't want the good guys to get wiped out. But the logic of that balance is key. While that's not a logic you need to prescribe to everywhere in your life, you don't need to perfectly balance things because then you might actually just get too logical and not have emotional attachments and stuff. And we don't want that. But you need to have a balance in your life depending on like what you do, how you do it, when you do it. Mediation, moderation. Yeah, definitely. You need to know what's good for you, and you need to know in what quantity is it good for you. Mediation, moderation, meditation, the three mms of om. But like I was saying, like, with the thing about, like, echo chambers is that people just, people constantly, I guess I'm trying to say, like, people constantly just do what I'm doing right now. They constantly just keep repeating things, and they keep bouncing around back and forth and back and forth, and they never really get anywhere. And in some environments, it is fair to understand that some people don't have a way to get out of that. They never have. And I, I recently saw I recently saw a music video. Uh, you you ever you ever seen? It? Well, I ain't gonna ask you if you ever seen this it. recent. It's gang shit. D- despite the title, it's it's one of those videos where obviously there's only one rapper rapping. It's like the Jonah Lucas "I'm Not Racist" video. No, nah, I've never even heard of it. All right. Um, well, it, basically, I, I guess the theme of the videos is they have like, is they have a white guy and a black guy or multiple people of different ethnicities, from what I've seen, speaking, but the voices coming out their mouth is just the rapper. But they're, it's for the video. They're there for the perspective of like the matter. They're talking to each other. They're arguing with each other. Yes. Like, are they talking? Or no, they're, he's rapping. He's rapping, but it's more like he's telling a story. And since they're putting his voice in the body of that person. There, he's that character. Yes. So I guess to say it gives the, it gives the artist an ability to speak in a way that because I know there there'd be a lot of controversy if a white artist did what the gang shit video did, but what it did was basically 
the first one was a cop, and it was the cop saying how like it had just been what they were shown when he was a rookie. He saw like what was going on around him. He saw that black people were doing this and that. He saw that it was the way the, that the other cops did. He said it was either it was just get down, lay down. Like either go with the force. Yeah. Or then he said the like against you. Yeah, like if they're resisting, they're threats. Or it was saying like these people have been dangerous to us to specifically say like blacks or any other just profiled people. Like it just kept going on with that, and he. The way he broke it down in the song is actually really... I, I, I even go as far as to say it's beautiful. Because he gives a good perspective on it as to how they feel. Because the same way we might blame like people that grow up in impoverished countries or impoverished areas that they never knew anything else. For people that have like radical beliefs, they they may have not ever known anything else. And this is the part where I'm saying like the tribalism, there there's limits to it. Are you allowed to hate somebody because they believe in something and that's all they've ever known? Like, if a race, if somebody's racist and that's all they've ever known, that's their entire family, everyone they've ever been around was racist. They've it never had interaction with someone that wasn't a part of their race. They've never really even talked to a black person. All they've known is stereotypes. It's or what they, they see, what they see in the media, which is not the 100% portrayal of what they see is what's been passed down to them. So, it is that we you always have to have discussion because while that might not work for everyone, it will work for some people. And if it doesn't work out, then you have to hope that that person later down the line just experiences their own life and goes through their perspective change and learns to be a better person than what they currently are. Not to say you don't. I I I would definitely say you should condemn a racist, but. I guess you can dim or educate though. There's a difference, obviously, in the context. Like if they're being, if it's a violent tone, like I personally do believe that a lot of microaggressions that they say come from racism, are things that I've heard even my like black parents say. Like I've heard them say like, oh, they, like that's I that's what uh Mexicans are good at. They're they're builders, and I'm just like, I don't think that's okay to say and I was like what do you mean they, they, they're they hard working people they build and then I'm just like I, I see you slept that hard working in there it kind of like it was like it was an attempt to like justify that you just call them specifically builders but there was no need for me to instantly assume that they she only meant builders I mean, is that racist or just stereotypical it all comes down to that I guess it all comes down to how people feel about how they respond to stuff. And that that leads me to a point I kind of want to ask you about. Like, and that's Id- identity politics. Identity politics? What do you mean by that? Like, When people correlate, not correlate, when people associate their personality with their beliefs, their politics, their, their beliefs and their politics, their attitudes. When it's, I'm not David Dawson, I'm... David Dawson the conservative or I am a conservative black male when their political views their entire identity political or just identity politics in general because well because what we're trying to what I want to do here is I do want to try and explain because as you said about the different as we've been talking about the different tribes that there will always be a different perspective on it so I'm condemning neither the left nor the right, but they each have their own problems that the opposite side has problems with. Yeah, I guess. And at some Everybody point... Everybody's dealing with the same stuff. Oh, I apologize. Well, no, 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 no. You can continue because you, you were about to say it. No, but like everybody's dealing with the same problems pretty much at the basic level. It'd just be easier to try to get along than try to destroy each other and then build from that. Because, like, expanding on what you said, like, yes, in the end, like, if, if you, when you have a problem with another tribe, I guess, so to speak, for this example, when you have a problem with another tribe, you have a problem with another group, wiping them out, what does that leave you with? Everything they had, unless you went scorched earth, but... 
and you I like a lot to, of knowledge and culture. And I'd like to think that in today's times we we're 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 over specifically conquering people for their resources. Even though I'm not I'm not a future I'm not a future sight. I'm not a future seer. There we go. I'm not a future seer, so we don't really know what could happen in the future and how resources might become a desperate struggle for survival again. But the resource right now is that paper. I wonder if paper is going to become like, um, because you know how everybody's switching back to paper. Well, not everybody, but companies are starting to abandon plastic. Yeah. Could that cause a shortage in paper? Or would trees be threatened by that at all? Or any well, type of. There's recyclable paper. That, that's really yeah. what they're trying to do. They're, they're making it recyclable so it can just we can kind of renew it. Okay. Then I think there's like biodegradable, there's biodegradable paper. There's other papers they can make. Like, but if it biodegrades, then you just have to make more. You can't reuse it. No, I'm saying like it's produced, like it's self-renewing. Like not, not trees. I think like hemp, we can use hemp paper. Hemp, hemp needs to get Yeah, we can use hemp paper. Yeah. Rice paper is like actual dookie Ass. but we can use rice paper if ancient no. if ancient Chinese people can no. do it we can <laughs> no alright rice paper's a no go you eat rice you don't write on rice it's weird could you wrap something in rice paper and eat it sushi alright so it's literally, <laughs> it's literally sushi so Rashad how do you personally view tribalism I think considering yourself part at part of a part of a group before you think as an individual, I I just think that's a bad mindset to have. I think you should think for yourself and not come to decisions just because somebody of this group would come to this decision or I'm Republican, this is how a Republican thinks, I'm going to do this instead of I am me. This is how I think I'm going to do this. It's I mean, it, it's good to get together with other people and, you know, build things and make things, but I still think you should be an individual when it comes to choices at the end of the day. That's I like I like that. I like that. Would you would you say you've ever like fell into it cuz I can think of times where I fell into it where I've like clearly been on this side and that side and that's whether from like competing in the past at gaming events sporting events you mean like just having an opposition yeah not not the opposition but the solely driven like i'm thinking i i place my thoughts as i was this and this before i was david dawson like i i've placed thoughts as i'm a member of this crew before i place thoughts as me so I responded to people and treated them because, you know, they were our enemy crew. So I treated them, I guess you could say, less than less than hospitable. And it wasn't really that call for because I wasn't the one on the crew that had beef. Yeah. And neither was the other person. I guess in high school, if like when I was part of a group, if somebody in the group had a problem with somebody or if somebody in the group was talking to a girl and where they stopped talking like usually certain people became more off limits because you you mess with certain people like they're your friends so you shouldn't talk to them if they have bad history with somebody else or something bad happened between the two of them but yeah I, I, I say I've fallen into it yeah in I think past. I think in a way we're all subject to the things that we're talking about here we're, we're all human you have to go through being a group to just to grow. I don't to think know. you can grow fully as an individual. You have to be part of a group at, eventually. Yeah. Hum, humans humans were not meant to just be isolated, social cre- like anti-social creatures. Like, you might like to think that, oh, I'm so anti-social, but I want you to realize that the actual meaning of anti-social means that you are psychotic. That, like, Jason Voorhees is an anti-social individual. Leatherface is an anti-social individual. By, like, medical terms. See, but... Isn't anti? Isn't somebody who just wants to stay in their room and play video games all day antisocial? No, like the actual definition of antisocial. Like, look it up. I, this was explained to me in like college psychology. I think it was psychology too. The antisocial literally just means you're a psychopath. Yeah, it's a personality disorder. I mean, 
What is in a personality disorder? No, I'm saying like, see, let's see. Contrary to the laws and customs of society, devoid of antagonistic to social, social, sociable instincts or practices. That basically means that that person would have no connection to anything normal in in society and life. They're a rebel. Yes. They're they contra- they go against society. And, and you know what goes against you know what goes against all customs, Rashad? Murder. Depends on the type. Self defense is murder. Murder is for murder, no but we support war. We well, nah, support I'm I'm talking war. murder for no good reason other than the fact that I don't possess human empathy. And cutting you up makes me feel I mean, this, good. This, that makes you a psychopath. Oh, antisocial people are psychopathic because they've what, been you. That that is what the word is used for. No, psychopathic people are antisocial, Bro. but antisocial people aren't psychopathic. Go 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 into it right there. Where? What are you pointing at? The the right the right one the right one. Because I'm adamantly going for people to stop saying that they are antisocial as just a slang term. I mean, this is what I was talking about earlier with popularizing disorders or things that shouldn't really be okay or acceptable. I, that's going to happen. I'm not going to lie. People are always going to be clout chasers. You could Somebody probably listening to this is calling me a clout chaser for starting a podcast because I listen to a lot of like podcasts, including Joe Rogan. Okay, but they can, they're listening. So. They can clout chase these nuts. Let's not be rude. I'm nah. Understand. If you think I'm a clout chaser, you uh, you can rewind it, it like ten seconds you ago. A clout chaser. They, clout chasers will never tell you that until other people start to do it. They they, they got to wait for their tribe to show up. So if I call if I call you a clout chaser, it gives them an excuse to. Well, I mean, you on the show too, so aren't. Were you I'm a clout a, chaser all along by coming onto this show? I'm a clout chaser. I like to. Do stuff in my free time. All right. What do you like to do in your free time? Podcast. <laughs> uh, I like to work on stuff. All right. Well, what's uh, what's one way you feel like one could navigate or get out of like toxic tribalism and dogmatic thought? Because I know you you stated constantly about like the you stress the importance of being an individual I've stressed the importance of being an individual and practicing individual thought to get past dogmatic thought you have to be willing to admit you were wrong and that everything you know could be wrong not is but has the possibility to be and then with that allow yourself to explore new new areas of the world, new new things, new cultures, new experiences, things that you may not have been allowed to do with your previous dogmatic thought that would have been completely unacceptable as long as they're not hurtful or anything, but just get, just trying, being willing to look at new ways of life. You don't got to live by them, but just being willing to respect them really. However, that does kind of lead to, like, you, you got to be willing to respect them. But to a certain extent, like, we can see it even in today's times. YouTube, Twitter, it's, it's not, they, they are they are deplatforming, like, people that are considered right-wing. Like, they de- they, de-porn, they deplatformed Alex Jones, and I'm going to be 100% honest. After actually looking into it and looking at Alex Jones through, like, Joe Rogan's podcast and through, like, people memeing him and seeing what he was actually saying. Alex Jones, everything he said was right. He tried to warn everybody. I don't know about all that, because the frogs are gay thing. I'm going to need a better explanation on that. We can get to that. If the frogs are gay. Wait, 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 wait. We, 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 can, get to, we can get to frogs being gay, because I do want to hear about that. Because I feel like it's got something to do with insect population, right? Alright. But, like, I don't see why they deplatformed Alex Jones when none of the things that he was saying, other than the Sandy Hook thing. And that was really dumb. He, 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 he has admitted to that. And now, I do believe that there are people out there that do still condemn him for that. But, as we're sitting here stating right now, like, you can't... It's not good to just write somebody off like that because... When he did do it, he did he did almost definitely once he was provided with sufficient evidence 
back down from it. While he did that, that was incredibly controversial and it was very unsympathetic. But Alex Jones didn't tell people to go to these parents' houses and call them crisis actors. All he did was make a general statement. Or the man's not very good at articulating himself. Yeah, he gets too wrapped up in what he's saying and loses his train of thought. But he didn't. He didn't like order any attacks or harassment. Nah, like, people. none his of that was on him. Overzealous. So I don't see. I personally don't see why they would deplatform him. It didn't. It didn't make sense yeah, because he was telling. He was trying to warn people about what was going on. And the real thing. I think it was just the controversy, the world, like gay frogs. I think it was the controversy, but I want to hear what, what are we talking about, gay frogs. Gay frogs. All right, listen, David. All right. Do you know how to reproduce? Yeah. Don't pull out. But what you have, <laughs> you have to put it in something first. A female. Right. That's if that's how the nature works. Gay, then they won't be putting it in no females, so they will not reproduce. So the frog population will decline. Okay? Okay. If the frog population declines, then the insect population, such as mosquitoes and other bad, annoying things that you probably don't want to deal with, there's a lot of other stuff. Wait, I'll wait. That's going to increase. Okay. Those bugs, mosquitoes especially, they're actually in Shelby County alone. There have been mosquitoes um, confirmed to carry. I want to say West Nile virus. <laughs> what? Uh, some, some something that really you sh- you wouldn't have to deal with if the frogs weren't gay. <laughs> <laughs> you would have to deal with West Nile f- virus if the frogs were not gay. <laughs> But yeah, the, like, the, 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 the point of it is that the bugs, especially the blood sucking ones, the blood transmitting ones, get and carry diseases throughout the population, thus killing the population or declining it and for population control. If you control the population size, you can control the population. You can control how hard they. Yeah, you, oh, can, that's you can control the growth. Else. You can control their growth. You can control how you can control how strong they are, essentially. But there's a lot of other animals that eat bugs, eat mosquitoes. They're all gay. That no, they're not. They're not all gay. You know what? But birds aren't gay. Five G's killing birds. But that doesn't. Well, five G G for gay. But anywho, gay. that that still doesn't have anything to do with the frogs being. Like, I, Look, the frogs are dying. The frogs, if the frogs are gay, they won't reproduce. But where? Which means the intake population will increase. Which means the disease will increase. Which means the I, I understand <laughs> the, the logic increase. of saying like that could happen because that makes sense with pro- population control. But how are they turning the frogs gay? You do realize they were working on gay bombs for like World War Two. They they had gay bombs. What? They, they've been working on actual gay serums. You can, I'm gonna research that. You you can look into it. The government. We'll look into it. I I could be. This could be a conspiracy. Huh? Matter of fact. How, t- type in how are they making the frogs gay? Actually, I don't I don't think we want to get. Let, 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 let's pause on that. Let's let's stop that topic. Let's put a pin in that because. I'm not sure how the frogs being gay affects our tribes. They're, it's another tribe hurting our tribe because they're getting diseases spread to our tribe. But the frog gonna, tribe? No. They're, is this, is this they're, Avatar? No. <laughs> <laughs> the frogs were protecting us from like Zika and West Nile. And I'm pretty sure Los Angeles is getting Ebola again. Because of how filthy it is. <laughs> but that's... Well, but that's all good. So, like we said today, everyone, we want everyone to try and think freely. We want you to try and have an open mind when you're approaching different topics. Have an open mind when you're even listening to this. Have an cause... open mind about gay frogs. I might sound crazy, but I'm not insane. I don't know about... Yeah, do, do your research on the gay frog thing, because I'm going to research that. Because that is... He may have had a reason to get deplatformed. But thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. On the next episode, we're going to have a very special guest. It's going to be a local aspiring content creator. 
So I hope you're going to enjoy it. I won't give you any other hints to it other than that, but hope everyone tunes in. Thank you for attending our second episode. Peace.